Page 138, Ice Skaters. We don't have anything new, but it gives me a chance to talk about some more stuff as far as playing music and playing piano. So I'll look it over. It's two pages long, more or less. Trouble in Bass Cliff, three, four time signature, but, you know, it's a waltz, so yeah. No sharps or flats in the key signature. We're in the key of C major. Make sure you're doing the C major scale. You've heard this lecture before, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Hopefully you know what to do with all that blah, blah, blah stuff. Let's take it one hand at a time and make sure we have the fingering and the notes and the rhythms and all that. Right hand, you're starting with thumb on E. So put your hand here. Now you're not moving around until you get to measure nine. So you don't need any other finger numbers until you need to move. So please read the notes, not the finger numbers. It's one, two, three, one, two, three, one. And that's tied, so you gotta hold it down for six counts and then measure five. You're here, one, two, three. And that's tied, so you hold it down for five counts. You get one beat rest and they have a prepare. Isn't that sweet? It's not part of the music. They're telling you get ready for something. They don't tell you what to get ready for, but get ready for something. But if you look at measure nine, you see you need fifth finger on the D. Well, you're here right now, you've got to come up here. So you just, the preparing is moving. During the rest, you just move. So measure nine, you're here. And this is like a C major scale going down, almost. They want you to go here. You see, the pattern of these notes. You have a C major scale between here and measure 15. It's all it's all there. The problem is we're not starting on C, we're starting on D. We have an extra note. They can do that. You start on any note. So instead of three here, we have to come up, you have to have four here. That way you can still have three here. You have enough fingers. And this business here, you'll get this when you go to the scales for two octaves. Right now, just, just relax and come over. You, it'll, it'll happen if you'll relax. You don't have to twist around and ah. Uh, just relax and it'll come over. So again, starting at measure nine. Four. Measure, what, 16? Let me talk about this measure because it's a little weird. Measure 16 has the three quarter notes in it. And there's a double bar in the middle of the measure. They split the measure. You're going into a new section. The EC, I recommend that you not finger that one five because you just played C here. I'm going to reach up, reach up to the octave here and use second finger. This is very common in piano playing, would just as well do it. I mean, you can lift up and move. I prefer not to. I want to connect these notes if I can, so I'm going to go 2 5. And then you can go a 3, 2, and then for measure 17, it's a 1. We did these member repeated notes using different fingers. We, that's what we're doing here. So again, those three quarter notes, it's 2 5. And then the next three, it's there. And then a two. And then for measure 17, it's a one. And now I'm in this position. One and two and. One and two. And all I'm doing is just rocking the hand. I'm just transferring weight from finger to finger, kind of walking on the piano. I can exaggerate it so you can see it, but it's really a little motion. five here. That's really what it is. Now measure 29, you get down there, it's three and four. These are awkward fingers working together. It's important that we work them though. They will become less awkward in time, so don't shy away from them. Go ahead and use three and four. That kind of gets us through the right hand, the fingering and the rhythm and all. Left hand you broken chords. You're at the C chord of the first measure and it's just a C. A 
light, light thing. I'll talk about that later. And then it's here. Got the 5 7 chord. Remember, the 5 7 chord is four notes. And we can use this one or this one. Well, we're using this one now. The right, the the left hand for the most part is not moving around. You don't need any other finger numbers in the left hand. You get down to the bottom of page 139. It's measure what 30. You have a D sharp and an F sharp. You're saying two four. Well, if I'm here, what we're doing is we're using the same fingers we would use on the white keys. We're just doing that. You can, if you want, use two, th three, two, whichever. Do four, two, or three, two, you decide. Or your teacher will decide. That's fine, too. Put the hands together. And when I first do this, I probably hesitate. I don't care. Let's go down to measure nine. We're here. Notes together. Here, here. Now it's like a C major scale. See, now we're using that note on the 5 7 chord. Before we were using this note. And then measure 17. The left hand's tied. You get the hands together and the rhythm's okay, then go back through it slowly and carefully and work out the hesitations. So it's a steady beat. And once we have that, then I think about the articulation. You're connecting this right hand. You lift up for the phrases. Sometimes they give you a rest, you have to lift up. But otherwise, like taking a breath. In the left hand, I'm gonna go here. Now they have here. And then later they give you staccatos. That may be an error. In my mind, there's no reason not to do staccatos on the first measure. You can play those staccatos too. The light light, I'll talk about later. Just this here. On measure nine, you're connecting all this. This. Just hold on to those for a while and what feels right. Each one. When I do it with a metronome, I'll just double the value and I'll hold each quarter note two counts instead of one because I gotta stay with the metronome. And the measure 17, you're just connected. Now at the bottom of page 39 here, and then when I repeat, it's fine. You can't connect that. You're playing the same note again. But when I do the DC and I go back to the beginning, I want to connect it because that leads into it. And when you lead into it, you usually connect it. I don't want to go. Da, da, da. No, I want to connect it. So I've changed the fingering so I can do that. Connect, connect that. And then the dynamics. The MP at the beginning is mezzo piano. That's the melody. Sort of soft. This this left hand has to be very so keep it in the background. Measure six, you get to come out. Up, up. There, you come up to about a moderately loud here. Measure nine, they're telling you moderately loud, but you're already there. And a measure 11, I don't, it's the right hand. Keep the left hand in the background. A measure 15, that's moderately loud still, because the arrow is after that. The left hand, then it's soft. Soft, and now we're soft, still soft. The left hand's very soft. Staying there and 
tone measure 27, you get the hairpin to go up, you're going to go up to moderately loud. You have to plan it out. Don't get moderately loud until measure 29. down to soft. For the speed, it's a it's a nice one. One, two, three, one, two. Find the hardest part, probably these. What can you do accurately on those? How are this? How fast can you play those accurately? That'll be about how fast you're gonna go. The whole thing is pretty much at one speed until you get to the retardando. So it's about that. Two, three, one. If you can play it that way without any hesitations or anything, otherwise slow it down. Now for the road map, let's talk about that. At the bottom of page 139, there's a repeat sign. That sends you back to measure 17, the reverse repeat sign. So you played all that again. And then once you played it the second time, the DC alfine, remember DC means go back to the beginning. So you go back over to page 138 and start there again. Alfine, the fine is at the top of page 139, there, where the double bars are, and that's the fine. So you play up to that, that chord, that, hold that out, and you're done. The piece ends there. A little confusing the way they've written it, but that's what they want, so that's, that's it. Now, let's talk about some of these other things. I've spoken a little bit about interpreting music. That's taking what's printed, which is just a basic schematic, a diagram of what somebody had in mind, and you turn it into music. You take it a bit further and you put feeling into it, music into it. Otherwise, you let a computer do it. Big deal. Remember the natural accents? First beat of the measure. One, two, three. One, two, three. Exaggerate it if you have to. Exaggerate it, but eventually you just want to feel this natural accent. And that's what those lights are for. They want those to be softer than the first beat. Well, if you put in the natural accent, that happens automatically. It just does. So really, they're telling you a little bit more about how to interpret the piece. You see all the articulation and the dynamics and the speed and all that? That is part of interpreting the piece, interpretation. They're giving you some guides on how to interpret it, but you can take it further than that. And the natural accents is one of those things. Normally, you don't get notes like light, light, or you know, lift and move and all that in the music. They just give you the notes and the symbols. And it's up to you to know what to do with it. Then at measure 19, where they say play lightly, it's like the first two measures are soft and the next two measures are down a little bit. Lightly. You, you can play them a little softer. Just like, but again, it's interpretation. Now, when you get this part of measure 17, that's kind of a hemiola effect. It's where they're throwing the rhythm off a little. It doesn't feel like it's in three. It feels like it feels like it's in two. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, instead of one, two, three, one, two, three, they throw it off. And you can accent it that way. Syncopation. He just throws it off a little bit. It's all interpretation. So once you've got the, uh, the mechanics out of the way, you start feeling the music, get into the music, and explore, experiment, see what you can do with it. Now they've added pedal. I disagree with it. I don't think you need pedal on this at all. But it, again, that's part of interpreting the music, whether you use pedal or not, and how you use the pedal. On uh, measure 17 and 18, they want you to pedal that. Well, you push the pedal down here because the eighth notes go so quick, you gotta pretty much put the pedal down with the notes here. Lift it up as you play that quarter note right, right there. Now 
that's what they want you to do. I think it sounds terrible. I, I don't want to mess this up. Ugh. But if you like that sound, go with it. Uh, to me, no. I would not pedal this piece at all, anywhere. However, for this lesson, I'll do it the way they're showing it. I just don't agree with it. Let's play this together very slowly and check all the notes and the rhythms. I'm not going to do the louds and softs. I'm going to do everything about the same. I'm not going to pedal it because you can hear the notes better without the pedal. You can pedal it if you want, of course. I'll give us three counts. We're going to do the repeats and the DC and everything. One, ready, go. One, two. Yeah. 